Now, she was the one of the most uh, beloved women in Australian history. Hazel Hawke was a passionate campaigner for women's rights and for education and in her final years, dementia. That's right. Her revelation about her battle with the disease shocked the nation and now her daughter is continuing her mother's legacy. She was the former first lady admired by so many. <laughs> If you do that, you'll crack me up. <laughs> but behind her immaculate public appearance hit a private pain and struggle. I wouldn't have chosen to have Alzheimer's, but it's... I live... I, I like my life. The only thing I would name as loss is that I've lost my driver's licence. And that's just obligatory. As soon as the big A is mentioned. Hazel's courage to reveal her battle with dementia generated an outpouring of public affection. Her daughter Sue cared for her mother in her final years until her death in 2013. Hazel Hawke has been a figure of real affection and I believe everybody has admired her dignity and her courage as she's dealt with such a dreadful illness. Since then, Sue has become a crusader for the cause, passionate about spreading the message you are not alone. September is Dementia Awareness Month and Sue Peters-Hawke joins us now. Good morning, Sue. Hi, Sue. how are you? Your mother was and still is an inspiration to a lot of people. Yep. So tell us why it's important to continue her legacy. Well, I think it's important simply because there are a lot of people with dementia and there are going to be more. And uh, there's a lot of people, both people with dementia themselves and the people who love and care for them, therefore impacted by the range of diseases that cause dementia. There's a lot of different varieties and stuff. Alzheimer's is the best known. Mm. And one of the reasons it's really important to talk about it is because there is such stigma and ignorance about what dementia is and how it's possible to have a good quality of life in the early and middle stages of dementia. There's so much fear that people don't even realise that with the right support and attitudes, we can support people yeah. to have that. And so we have to dispel the ignorance, the fear, the dementia. We have to do that with information and conversation and being open about it, I yeah, think. Yeah, the sure. more we talk about it, the, the, yeah. you know, it takes the heat off it a little uh, bit. It well, makes people more aware of what you can go that's through. That's right. And the more we get killed the myths like it's a normal part of ageing, it's just absolute codswallop. Mm. Mm. You know, it, it's a range of neurodegenerative diseases that happen and it's not a normal part of ageing. The prevention message is important. Sure. We hope to reduce numbers in the future by having people understand what it is to... Uh, adopt a brain healthy lifestyle but in the meantime this month we're really concentrating on the fact that people with dementia and to a great extent to their families and carers and supporters experience social isolation because of the stigma mm. because of the fear because people don't know how to relate and connect and yeah you know we can really do something about that so was that one of your mother's fears that people would change their perception of her yes very much so, so, because she was aware of the stigma. She was part of the society and the culture which had that stigma, so she knew what was out there, and yet she knew she was still herself. She was changing, and she was scared of those changes, but she also very much still kept doing things in terms of work and community and her personal and family life mm. and her garden, and she didn't want to be looked down on because of people going, oh, she's got dementia. Mm. And so sadly, that is what happens a lot. Yeah, there's a judgment mm. out there about it. You, you yeah. cared for her, your, your mother, in, in the last few years of her life. In your opinion, do you think that uh, gave her a strong sense of uh, improved of her life? I mean, did it? do you think it had helped her at all? Look, I think what me and other people were able to do in terms of, I like the word support rather than care, mm -hmm. because I think it accords more dignity to the person with dementia. And what it meant is that we filled in the pieces that mum was not able to, for her to continue living at home and enjoying her garden and her community. She'd walk down the local shops most days, sometimes twice. She might have forgotten she'd gone and <laughs> she'd go again if the weather was good. Um, she kept fit and healthy and active and she enjoyed her sense of place. Mm. And I think the fact that we did that and did that with an attitude of supporting her independence and her choices and her decisions mm. for as long as we could, um, I think it made a big difference to her having a quality of life in that time. There came a time where, very sadly, we couldn't sustain that. But that was really only in the late stages of the disease. And 
like in the late stages of a lot of diseases, yeah. people become more dependent and you reach that very sad stage of things. Mm. But for a long time, a lot more was possible and that community connection thing was so important. Mm. Sue, so there are now more than 350,000 people living with dementia yep. in Australia. So how crucial is, it, is the support that an organisation like Alzheimer's Australia offers? Oh, look, it's critical. Um, I think you're going to scroll through the National uh, Dementia Helpline number. Yes, we'll put that number up uh, on the screen. Or the website, mm. um, alzheimersaustralia.org.au or fightdementia.org.au. That's a really good entry point or starting point for people who are looking for information or ways to connect to other people to find out more um, or to find out about support services or support groups. There is a lot out there. Of course, we would like there to be more. But uh, it, I think it's very important because especially for people who feel that sense of stigma, mm -hmm. we've got research which shows us that people feel shame and embarrassment. Mm. Now, isn't it ridiculous to feel shame and embarrassment about a disease? Yes. Yeah. Something you know, it, it's awful. Yeah. And so we really want to get across the message that if you reach out and connect, there are people who will help you navigate your way to and you're maximising your quality of life because uh, it can be done. With support, you can make a difference to the life ahead of you. Exactly. Oh, well, Good job, you Sue. So much, Sue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate your time.